Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Oral Legend Material Graph. Today, we're going to be looking at landscapes. What we're going to do to create a landscape is go Modes, Landscape, and if there isn't currently a landscape in your level, it will give you this pop-up menu thingo where you can choose how big you want your landscape to be, what you want its resolution to be. For this example, we're just going to be leaving it at default settings and we're going to hit create. Okay, we now have a landscape, you know, good for us. So going back up to select mode rather than landscape mode, we can see that this landscape needs a landscape material down here. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new material, just a regular material, doesn't have to be anything special. We're going to call this landscape tutorial and we're going to assign this to our landscape, even though, you know, we haven't done anything with it yet. So welcome to the material graph. You should be very familiar with this so far. Now a landscape material is no different to a regular material except it can make use of the landscape layer blend node, which is incredibly powerful. And the other thing is that it can sample landscape layers. With this layer blend, over on the left-hand side, we're gonna click new layer. We're gonna click three new layers. Uh, we're gonna expand these out. We're gonna call the first one grass. We're gonna call the second one dirt. We're gonna call the next one sand. Right? Makes sense. Uh, we're going to duplicate this as well. And we're just going to get three colors rather than textures for now. So let's put this into our base color layer and click save. Okay, so our landscape is still pitch black. If we go back into landscape mode, a really annoying kind of bug in the current version of the engine, um, your Landscape layers won't actually appear up here until you, I believe, reload the map. And then we're going to go back. And then if we go to landscape, yep, paint mode, we've got all of our layers down here. Yippee. So first thing we need to do is create layer info. Uh, these are going to be weight blended layers. And just click OK. It'll make a folder for you. Weight blended. OK. Weight blended. OK. So you can see we've now got green. Uh, if we were to click on our dirt layer and start painting it, we now have brown. And if we get our sand layer, we've got yellow. So this is the very basis of what a landscape material is. It's a material that you can paint stuff on. And the performance benefit of using a landscape material is that the instructions for these individual material layers are only being run on chunks that actually use that layer. So imagine you've got a really, really expensive, you know, automatic puddle water interaction layer in your landscape. You'd only want that to be running on the particular chunks that you've actually painted that down in. So that's why this is super, super powerful because you don't have to run unnecessary instructions on something that's just purely grass over here. So next thing we're going to do, and here's one I prepared earlier, we're going to top-down project some normal maps onto our layers. And so we've got our normal maps, we've got them synced up to their appropriate layer, and we're gonna plug that into the normal. We hit save. Then if we have a look, we've got our sand normal map here, we've got our grass normal map here, and we've got our dirt normal map here. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So now it's time for us to talk about the blend types over here. These can be super important depending on what kind of landscape material you're creating. The default is weight blend, which will do you fine for most things. Uh, there's also one called alpha blend and there's also one called height blend. Now, height blend and weight blend are relatively the same. And what weight blending is, is no matter what you've painted here, the sum of all of these layers influence will always equal one. Right in the middle of these three layers right here, each one has an influence of 0.33. Whereas here, it is like 50% dirt, 50% sand. And over here, it is 50% dirt, 50% grass. So with weight painting, the combined alpha always ends up being one. So if I was to paint dirt, you know, 100% in the middle here, and then I went to erase it, we would get some funky stuff going on here. 
because the landscape doesn't know that there was sand underneath the dirt. It didn't know if it was sand or grass or whatever. So if we were to go into our landscape again and add one more thing, and we're just going to call this one blue stuff because I've got no idea what to uh, call it. <laughs> uh, and we set it to alpha blend. Maybe we'll give it a funky normal map like some rock or something. Go back to our landscape material and we're going to give it a non-weight blended layer. We hit OK. And so this blue stuff layer has its own unique independent alpha mask. Um, so if I was to subtract this, everything underneath it is completely unaltered. It, it knows exactly what's underneath it. So for example, let's imagine this is snow or something and I wanted to paint it, you know, here. But then when our player comes and walks through the snow and uncovers the ground underneath, we want it to still have the data under here. So this is a way that you could do that and actually cover that in one of my tutorials on landscape deformation interaction right here. So that is what alpha blend can do. Now, the other option that we have is height blending. So if we were to get our sand layer and turn it into a height blend, and same with this one, you can see it's got an extra little node here. And what this is asking for is a black and white texture that corresponds with the, you know, like the height map of the sand. So if we go to our sand texture here, and I have this set up so that the blue channel is a height map, and we were to get the, the blue channel, put it in there, get the blue channel, put it in there. So when I hit save, we should see a difference. You can see right now it's like a smooth, smooth transition from sand into grass. But if we hit save, it's like a, a height blended version of that. Um, it takes the, the height map texture into account in the blend. So using height blend can be a really good way of getting extra detail into your transitions. Something I get asked like a lot is how can I, you know, paint paths or something on my landscape? You know, if I was trying to paint something this thin, you can see that there's always little gaps in it and it's never going to be like smooth looking and, you know, it can end up looking really um, sort of square, I guess. So that's where height blending can come in clutch because if we look at this in wireframe mode, you can see we don't actually have that much data to play with. Uh, these are like pretty big triangles and we can only paint the vertices on the landscape. So by using the height blend, we can kind of take that information and interpolate between it using another texture, which, you know, ends up looking a lot nicer. So, now that you know the basics of how to set up a landscape and a landscape material, and you know how to use a layer blend, you know the benefits of using a layer blend, you know what a weight blend, an alpha blend, and a height blend is, you are ready to tackle the rest of my landscape tutorial tutorials. tutorials. Next time we're going to be looking at how to set up an automatic blending between textures and values depending on the slope of the landscape. So you can see as I paint a hill here, it will automatically turn into a cliff and it blends quite nicely. Then we'll also be looking at how to place grass procedurally on particular landscape layers. So you can see on my grass layer, I've got grass, but on my forest undergrowth layer, I've got all of this foresty debris and some rocks and some little saplings. So even though this was a super basic video, I hope that you still learned something and I hope you're looking forward to the rest of the landscape videos. So if you did enjoy this, make sure you hit like. And if you want to stay up to date with the upcoming videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring that little bell icon so you can get notified as soon as I upload a video. If you need any help with landscapes or materials or just Unreal Engine in general, feel free to join our Discord. It's very active full of very helpful people. And if you love what we do here on the channel together, make sure you check out our Patreon below. So with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye.